Hi there, Gary Turner here. Just wanted to share a bit of tragedy really um, today, but also a weaving of a few different topics. Um, so I've really started trying to grow some of our own vegetables um, here at home over in Dartford in Kent in the UK. And also, of course, part of that process, of course, is um, some of the vegetables need to be pollinated. Some are self-pollinating, some require these wonderful bees to be pollinated, to be pollinate, but can you see down there? We unfortunately have four or five dead bees. And what happened, um, if you see over here, this actual, this little plastic tub is a, a water feeder. So you pour the water down, it allows the water to get to the roots of the flower and of the plants. And what I found earlier as I was watering um, these plants, is suddenly these bees were popping up. I was like, what the hell? So I forced more water down. So it overflowed and then brought all of the bees up. And there were six or seven bees, um, all of them straggling for their life at the bottom of this, uh, this tube with the water in. So, and I went over there to another tree. Same thing again, another four or five came out. Managed to save four of them, um, which have flown away, which is amazing. But it's just this reminder that how connected everything is, right? That those bees are required to pollinate some of the vegetables so that we can eat. You know, they've got their own role in the ecosystem. Um, and this is, a, this is the other lens, which I may, I'm still trying to find a way to talk about, which is, I work in the chemical industry, as some of you may know, and one of my solvents is part of a chemical mixture that goes into a, um, an insecticide. And it looks like with more and more research that that particular insecticide it's harmful to bees. So there's some really strange interconnections starting to show up and I'm looking to explore those more going forward. But um, if you're into your home growing, do drop me an email, uh, do drop me a note. Let me know how you're getting on with it. What do you find difficult? What have you learned about your connection to nature and, and, and vice versa through that process? You know, what do you find easy? What do you enjoy about it? I'd love to hear from you. I'd really love to get some tips from you as well. Um, and yeah, I'm looking probably to to share a more regular update, particularly with my Hexo Change community. I'm really grateful to all over 250 of you that follow my my journey, my shares, my blogs, my videos from time to time. And I appreciate you being with me on this journey, and I hope you're finding value. And also, I'd love to to let me know what is a value to you. What would you like to hear more about? What would you like? What questions do you have? Um, for me, as somebody that straddles working in a full-time corporate role, three and a half billion turnover corporate, but also serving as a strategic advisor and thinking partner on the outside um, to a number of clients. You know, what comes up for you? What questions do you have? I'd love to, to hear them and I'd love to engage with you and uh, speak to you soon. And um, ah, one other thing, one other thing that did come up was, you see what we've done here? We had an old piece of netting. We've recently moved house. It's a, a solution to try and stop these bees getting stuck in these tubes again. And because the tubes are very helpful, like I say, to ensure we're reducing the wasted water and that it is getting to the roots. Hopefully that now is an old piece of netting with an elastic band wrapped around that hope, which the water can get through easily, still to the roots, but hopefully stops those bees getting trapped next time. Take care. Bye bye.